Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 4 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. Last episode, we were working on getting ourselves the Metal Farmer from Industrial Craft 2, and we got most of the components, but we were missing the rubber required to make the electronic circuit, and we did a bunch of dirt sifting, and since the end of last episode, I haven't done any more dirt sifting, but I have done a bunch of other stuff. The first thing is that people reminded me that you could put cobblestone or normal stone into the smelter, and it will be become seared stone uh, which you can then pull out into a casting basin and use as seared stone on the smelter and it actually makes uh, your smelter bigger i like this because it means you can make the smelter a lot bigger a lot quicker i dislike this because i'm not really a fan of using two different textures for the smelter here uh, but it does work and it's made our smelter it's made smelting stuff up a lot easier uh, since the end of last episode i have done a ton of gravel and dust sifting to get a bunch more diamonds a bunch more redstone and overall just a bunch more materials uh, over here in this chest now i've probably done like a few stacks of compressed gravel and a few stacks of compressed dust and there were a bunch of comments on the last video about uh, how we could get more dirt now a bunch of people like loads of people told me to use shears and shears do not work uh, normal shears platinum shears and all the shears uh, that are easily attainable at this level in the game do not work on leaves you can't use them uh, I have, for those who don't know one a server right now and i've had some other people on the server ask if the shears work and a bunch of people have said no the shears don't work uh, i tested it in a single player world the shears don't work so we can't use use shears on leaves to get dirt in our barrels but somebody on the server did point out that you can actually hammer down oak wood if we get an oak log here throw it down and hammer it you get some of these wood chippings some x compressor which you can then use in these oak barrels to actually make dirt and so what i've done since the end of last episode is a bunch more tree farming i had to do a bunch more dust sifting to get some bone meal to make the trees grow and get the wood but i did a bunch more of that and we now have 44 dirt over in this chest over here and i am going to go away and sift that but before i go away and sift that uh, I want to set something else up because the other thing I'm going to set up uh, is going to take quite a bit of time to work and that thing is the blast furnace because the blast furnace is used to make steel and we need a lot of steel to progress on most of the machines uh, a lot of pretty much everything requires steel as we move further on into the game uh, so we need to set up a blast furnace early and start getting some steel being made so there are three different ways to make a blast furnace here all of them require hardened clay and sand so I did start smelting up a little bit of hardened clay before the episode starts and it looks like we're just a little bit short on fuel to actually make that work 36 is the number that we're going to need uh, there were three different ways to make it you can make it with a ball of glue with an ender pearl or with tnt i'm gonna make it with tnt because we don't have any ender pearls and i don't know of an easy way for us to get balls of glue uh, if you're not playing on the skyblock version if you're playing on the normal version you can actually just put horses into a smeltery and uh, that will make glue however it does not work because we don't have any horses here on no way to spawn horses and so what we're going to do instead is we're going to use all of this gunpowder that we got from sifting dust combine it up with all of this sand that i made before the episode all this stuff over here as well as all of this hardened clay and it should be fairly easy for us to actually do this so uh, let's go ahead and first of all craft up nine of these we need nine of these to make this work because we need a total of 36 of these blast brick in order to make the blast furnace so if we go ahead and do something like that and i'm gonna put it right over here next to my cook oven all we gotta do make it three by three on the bottom make it four tall this one does not need to be hollow in the middle it needs to be full in the middle if you make the railcraft version the railcraft version does need to be hollow in the middle but it's a little bit harder to make because if we look at the railcraft blast furnace which is the same shape but it requires normal bricks which requires us breaking down the clay and then smelting them all individually takes a little bit longer but does require a little bit less brick so uh, if you want to use less brick then you can do that uh, one thing that the immersive engineering version also needs is the immersive engineering hammer because if we don't have the hammer over here uh, we can't actually form the blast furnace because right now we can't there's no window we can't open it up we need to make ourselves an engineer's hammer which i think we should be able to do fairly easily we're gonna need some string which we have in here we're gonna need some sticks which we can make from the wood and then we're gonna need some iron which we now have actually quite a lot of we've got just over five stacks of iron in here now which is very nice indeed because we are going to make uh, a few industrial craft machines today and all of those require quite a bit of iron especially uh, when we don't have the metal farmer yet so uh, let's go ahead and make ourselves some sticks let's do something like that stick the iron at the top and the string right above that and that gets to the engineer's hammer then all we have to do is simply right click on this guy boom and it becomes a blast furnace nice so now basically what this does is this turns iron into steel much like with the coal oven where this turns coal into coal coke uh, it takes a long time if we look up the recipe for a steel ingot over here and we look at the immersive engineering recipe which is this one right here 
you can see that it takes 1,200 ticks in order to turn an iron ingot into a steel ingot, which means it's going to take about a minute to turn every single ingot of iron into an ingot of steel, which is why I want to get this thing up and running before we start sifting the dirt uh, so that it's actually working and starting to make steel. Whilst we do that, uh, you can use two different types of fuel. You can either use coal cook or you can use charcoal. You can't use normal coal. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, but you can't, and it, it's kind of annoying because we have quite a bit of coal. Uh, but for now, we're going to use coal cook. I did make some more of this uh, between episodes mostly to get some more creosote, uh, but using coal cook for the blast furnace does also work quite nicely. Uh, you can also use charcoal, and I do actually have a uh, quite nice supply of charcoal up here, ready to go if we run out of coal cook. The coal cook should last us quite a while. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a full stack of iron in here, and set this going on making us a full stack of steel. Again, that full stack there is going to take about an hour to transfer into a full stack of steel, so uh, brace yourself for that taking a while, but hopefully we'll have a few ingots by the time I'm finished sifting this dirt. So, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away again. I'm going to sift a bunch more dirt, try and get one of those rubber tree saplings. If I don't get one, I'll make some more dirt using the wood chippings again, and I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, it took about half of the stack of dirt, but we now have a rubber tree seed from Ex Nihilo, which I'm assuming if we right-click onto a piece of dirt, actually becomes a rubber sapling from Industrial Craft 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clear out these trees real quick, get this thing grown. I'm fairly certain that we can use normal bone meal on this. So let's grab some of that. I don't think it's going to grow. Oh, wait, it did grow. Wow. Uh, I'm going to try and get some more rubber tree seeds from this thing as well, because I don't know if we actually get more rubber tree saplings from putting this thing down. I'm assuming we do. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get some more from this. If I do get some more uh, saplings from this, I'll plant a bunch more of them. I'll probably extend the island out a little bit this way and set up like a full row of specifically rubber trees. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to get ourselves a wood tap to actually remove that. But what's that? like I said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to try and get some more saplings from this. I didn't get a rubber tree one there. Try and get some more saplings. If I don't, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Oh, come on, you can't. Oh, we did go on. Whew, okay, so I'm going to go away. I'm going to grow a few more of these, get a little farm going. I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we now have a good number of these rubber tree trees. So all we need to do now is make ourselves one of these tree taps from Industrial Craft 2, which thankfully uh, are fairly easy to make, and the recipe hasn't been changed in the expert mode. And all we need to do is walk up, and if you right-click on one of these, you'll get a bunch of the sticky resin, which we can then smelt up into rubber, which we can then use for our cables. And I believe we can even do this twice to actually get, for a chance, a little bit more. Uh, if you don't do it twice, if you just do it once, you can see there's a little mark there. Uh, if you just do it once, uh, the sticky resin has a chance to come back, so if you want, like, a renewable source of sticky resin, uh, just leave it there. If you do it twice, there is a chance you get a little bit more. Sometimes you don't. Uh, I'm not too bothered about the renewability because we've got quite a lot of these saplings now, and thankfully, these saplings only take one bone meal to grow, so if we just do that and bone meal it, we get more, so it's a lot easier for us uh, to just grow more of these than it is to just wait for the, the sticky resin to actually come back. And so... Uh, all we need to do now is actually just go around, grab a few of these, enough to make ourselves six copper cable, which I think is just six of these. So if we come back this way and start smelting some of these up, we'll throw you in there, and then I'll grab a little bit of coal to fill that up with, like that. Whilst we're waiting for that to finish, we can start working on the item casing, because if we look again at the metal former, we don't have the iron, the basic machine casing here in the middle yet. It does require an iron chipset. At the end of last episode, we started making one of these over in our assembly table. Since the end of last episode, we have made an iron chipset, as well as a redstone chipset that's going to be important uh, for a little later on in the episode. But for now, uh, if we come back over here, we can start with that. We don't need any more tree taps just yet. Let's quickly grab some iron, craft it up like so. I think we need eight of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once we've got that, all we need to do is craft them in a circle with the chip set in the middle. A boom! We get ourselves a basic casing, and if we combine that up with the actual circuit, which we can almost make, uh, we've got the copper cable, we just need six rubber to actually make it work, so we'll take all of you, craft those up like so, that gets us a six copper cable, and now I think we should have everything we need to actually make this happen, so let's get rid- did that not craft? I'm fairly certain we had the casing in our hands, but I will craft that again. Uh, all we need now is the chipset, which needs one more iron plate and two redstone. So let's quickly whip up one more of those. Grab one redstone from our now over almost two stacks of redstone in here. Actually, I'll take a 458 there. And if we do something like this and this, I think think we have pretty much everything we need. Now, these items don't stack, so the shift click unfortunately didn't work, but we now have a metal former, and so once we get power, we can actually start to make our plates without using the forge hammer, and we can get a one-to-one -one ratio, so we're not using twice as much iron as we're getting per plate. So, let's throw this thing down for now. I think, like, right about here, I want to make sure I do get these torches down, because otherwise, uh, mobs do start spawning. I've been doing a little bit of nerd polling whilst I've been trying to hammer down my uh, compressed cobblestone, and every time I come back down, there's always 
flipping mobs all over the place. So let's light this place up just a little bit. Uh, throw some down over there. Uh, that looks fine. They are, hopefully they won't spawn over there. But what we need to do now is we need to power this thing because Industrial Craft 2 machines, uh, of course, run on EU, not Redstone Flux. So we can't use these hobbyist steam engines to power the metal former. Instead, we're going to have to make a generator of some kind uh, from Industrial Craft 2. I'm just going to make the simple, basic generator. Uh, and all it needs for this is some iron plates, an iron furnace, which is more iron plates than a normal furnace, as well as an RE battery, which is made using an insulated tin cable, some tin item casing, and some electrotine, which I think we have. How do you get electrotine? Uh, we get electrotine through sifting sand. We should have some. We have four, which I think is more than enough because we only need two for the one RE battery. We haven't sifted through that much sand at all, really. Uh, I did set this guy off sifting some sand, so we have two more over there. But uh, really, I've been sifting gravel for the diamonds and then dust for the, the bone mill and the redstone. And sand doesn't really have anything that I'm after right now. It has the status quartz. So once we move into the super late game applied energistics, we're going to need that. But for now, we really don't need it. So we need five of these for the furnace, and then we need three more for the actual generator itself. We're then, of course, going to need a lot of cobblestone to make this work. We need, like, what, eight blocks of compressed cobblestone, which is just more than a stack. So let me go ahead and make another one of those. We can then take this and make ourselves a furnace, and then we can craft that up like so with our iron plates like that. Get ourselves the iron furnace, and now all we are missing is the RE battery. So... Let's come back over here, grab ourselves some tin. I'm not quite sure why the tin's brown in this. I'm so used to the tin being white in the Sfax texture pack. But let's take that. Let's do this and this. Uh, we are going to... Oh, a hammer broke. Okay, that is fine. All we need to do is come back over here, grab the last two treated sticks that we have, and make ourselves a second one. Unfortunately, uh, it broke at a pretty bad time because we're almost, like, beyond needing it. We've got our metal farmer over there. So once we have that, we don't really need the forge hammer anymore. But we'll take this. Uh, we're going to need at least a few of these to make all of the tin item casing. So let's go ahead and take those and then craft those into the 14 item casing that we need then all we need is the tin cable so we'll take that and combine it up with the cutters to get the cable uh, and then we do need to craft that up with a bit of rubber so let's take you do something like this and now we should if we do this and this be able to quite easily make ourselves an RE battery Nice. Combine that up with the furnace and the iron plates, and we get ourselves a generator, which produces up to 10 EU per tick max. Uh, and so if we throw this thing down right about there, next to the metal form of the power, will just transfer from one to the other. We could use insulated copper cables to transfer up to 128 EU per tick uh, between machines, and we probably will do that if we add any more machines further down the line. But for now, this one generator will just transfer power directly over to the one metal former, and so... What we can do is we can put any kind of fuel in that we want. I'm going to put some of our coal into this thing. It's going to start producing fuel, and the red arrow over here on the metal farmer is going to start to charge up. Now, now that that's done, uh, I want to start working on a second form of power. I want to start working on some better power, because right now, we've got these two hobby steam engines, which are doing okay. They produce together, like, 32 RF per tick, because they kind of do, like, 16 a tick uh, at max speed. I haven't quite got them up to 20. I'm not quite sure if that just takes too long or, or what, but I haven't got them up to 20. So together, these things are producing about 32 RF per tick, and that's not a whole lot. That's actually a really small amount of redstone flux per tick. And also, we can actually start to transfer redstone flux to EU using some immersive engineering cables. And so the next thing that I'm going to make is the water wheel. You're probably familiar with the water wheel if you've ever played with immersive engineering before. It's this guy over here. And to make it, we need a bunch of water wheel segments as well as a shaft. And to make the shaft, you need the metal former, which is why I needed to get some power up and running uh, before we could make this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make three of these water wheels because you can have up to three of these uh, next to each other to actually make the, the one multi-block water wheel. Uh, and to make that, we're going to need three shafts. That's three blocks of iron uh, inside the thing over here. Thankfully, uh, we still do have a lot of iron, even though we've used a stack for the steel and quite a bit for the metal farmer and the generator. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Let's grab one, two, three of those and put them in here. We want to make sure that it's on the right mode. Let me check this real quick. It wants to be on extruding. The metal farmer does have three modes. It has extruding, rolling, and cutting, and those all do different things. Cutting obviously turns it into wires. Extruding is going to go ahead and turn this into the shaft that we want. And I think the last one there, rolling, is what we're going to use to turn our ingots into plates in the future. Whilst we're waiting for that to finish, you'll notice that the water wheel also needs uh, eight of these water wheel segments which are made using treated sticks and treated wood and that is why I made a bunch more of this creosote oil before the episode started so what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to go away again we have a bunch of wood over here I think the two stacks of oak that we get from that are going to be enough to make all of the water wheel segments but I'm going to go away I'm going to craft up a bunch of treated planks like so getting our buckets of creosote crafting them with the oak wood making the treated wood planks we're then going to use those to make the treated wood sticks and then use those to make the water wheel segments and I'll be back in in a second.
Okay, and a little while later, now that we have 24 water wheel segments, enough to make three water wheels, we can come back over to our metal farmer, which is now done with all three of its shafts. So, if we do something like this, we can get ourselves three water wheels. Nice. Now, the way that these work, first of all, they're going to need, like, a bunch more space than these already have. And I don't know why he's putting these on the bottom block. It's really annoying, because I really don't want them there uh, on that bottom half. But uh, basically, this is a multi-block structure that produces renewable energy via the moving of this water wheel. And basically, all you have to do is have water flow over that water wheel, and it will start to spin and produce power. Now, it's not quite as simple as just putting this thing down. We do need to make ourselves, uh, I think it's called a dynamo. Let me quickly check uh, immersive engineering over here, because I know what it looks like we need this guy the kinetic dynamo uh, in order to transfer that power from the water wheel uh, into actual redstone flux per tick and so we're gonna have to make one of these as well and this is where things get a little bit tricky uh, first of all you'll notice we need three steel ingots down here which is why i started with the blast furnace at the start of this episode which has now done 20 steel ingots uh, which should show you how long it's taken me to do all of the stuff so far it's taken about 20 minutes uh, so we can take that uh, and that's going to allow us to create uh, the dynamo. We also need an MV capacitor, which requires three iron, two electrum ingots, which is some gold and some silver in the furnace, a lead ingot, two treated wooden planks, which we still have, and a block of redstone, as well as this electrum wire coil, which requires an iron ingot, as well as a bunch of MV wire coil, which is made using electrum and some treated wooden sticks. So, uh, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to stick a bunch of gold uh, and a bunch of silver into the smeltery real quick. We'll do 15 of each. That's going to get us 30 ingots worth of electrum is that going to be enough uh maybe we need eight of these each one of those you get two for so we need four times we need 16 for the electrum wire and then we need 17 18 so yeah that's gonna be more than enough i think we can actually probably get away with just putting a nine of each in but i'm gonna do 10 just to be safe let's put 10 of each each of those into the smell tray smell those up into some electrum they shouldn't conflict with the seed stone or the blood so we'll leave those running over there we should have enough lava to make that work as well and basically what i'm going to do whilst i wait for that to finish is first of all extend this platform out a little bit and then set up the casing for where the water wheel is going to go because you want to have water flowing all the way around the water wheel and you want to preferably i like to not have the water flowing everywhere and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go away i'm going to build this thing and i'm going to talk you through how it works after it's done Okay, so a little while later, now that the Electrum has finished smelting up and we can craft that up into ingots, we have a frame that looks like this. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to put our three water wheels down here, here, and here. And we're going to have the water flow from the top round down the front here and then back underneath the water wheel because we want to get as much surface area as we possibly can on this water wheel so uh, let me do a bit of a nerd pull here actually let me first of all get some water here because you're gonna have to set up like another three by three uh three by one unlimited water source uh, at the top of this thing and i probably will change the material at some point to make this look a little bit nicer uh, i'll probably use like oak logs instead or something but for now what we want to do is we want to have this flow along this way so that is one too far forward and so what we want to do is bring this in just a little bit because we don't want it to flow down the back there we only want it to flow forward so i'm going to, have to bring this in just a little bit like this if we take the wood and put it down right about there this should now only flow forward so you want it to go there you can see that started to move a little bit it's flowing the wrong way but we want it to go around like this down we do want to make sure it doesn't flow out so i want to make sure i put something like there there and i think if i stop this at the source it shouldn't come back Uh, oh, it totally does come back. Okay, now, ignore what I just said. That, it was completely wrong, apparently. Let's stop that flowing. I think that one shouldn't come back. Yeah, okay, that doesn't come back. So we want it to flow like that. I'm going to have to put down some torches again because these are flowing all over the place. Uh, and then we just need to do the same thing on the other side to create uh, a bit of a water source here. Actually, I don't think that works. I think I have to put uh, two of these, like all three of them down because uh, I don't think it actually creates an unlimited water source because the water only flows forward yeah it doesn't at all okay cool let's go ahead and break this so i can nerd pull back up in a second and i'm only using dirt here for the nerd pull because it's the easiest thing to break uh, with my hands we should probably get a shovel at some point and actually now that we've got like a smell tree probably some better tools as well because we're still using just the default flint stuff and it's a, it's a bit of a pain but if we come back over here we can nerd pull up once again and get that third water wheel up and running just by doing something like that and now they should all start flowing the whole thing should go all the way around we are going to have i think a bit of an overflow here on that side but that's fine the water is going all the way down back and round to the bottom a little bit and this should now produce power if we hook it up to this kinetic dynamo so let's come back over to our crafting table and see if we have what it takes to make this thing so for this uh, we're first going to need the steel which we've got the electron wire coils should be fairly easy uh, we have eight uh, treated wooden sticks so making that should be completely 
fine. We got all eight there. Craft that up around a single piece of iron, like so. That gets us the electron wire coil. Super easy to do. Uh, I know for a fact we're going to need at least one, possibly two blocks of redstone. Uh, so I'll go ahead and craft one up for now. I know we need one for this, uh, which also requires one lead ingot, which I know for a fact we have in here. Let's take one of those. And I think... That should be enough to craft up this guy, at which point I think we then have enough to craft this. We just need some copper ingots uh, to finish that up there. So let's take both of those. Is that copper or is that bronze? That is neither because I was clicking on the wrong thing. It's redstone. There we go. We got ourselves a kinetic dynamo. Nice. Now, unfortunately, the way this works is we have to break this uh, water wheel in order to get it up and running. Because I think uh, the way that this actually works is we need to have, uh, we need to put the water wheels onto the kinetic dynamo. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of a pain here. Let's, let's, oh, we have to break these water wheels and the water is just going to come flowing down. But let's get rid of this, this, and this, making sure not to lose any of our water wheels on the way. And also not to drown. We're then going to replace this block here with a kinetic dynamo. you got to be careful which way you face it. You want to make sure you put it down facing inwards like that. So that the like, copper bit on that side is facing inwards. And the steel bit on the back there is facing that way. Then if we put the water wheels onto that dynamo like so. That should then, if we don't fall out of the world here, start to produce some electricity for us. Now that middle water wheel isn't spinning for some reason. And that reason is that we placed it way too high and also at the same time got rid of the water source. So, uh, let's break that. Let's make sure it's on the exact same point as this one. So there in the middle like that. The whole thing is now spinning. I think we would get a bit more power out of it by putting one in the middle, but that is now spinning and that is now working. So, all we need to do from this point onwards, actually I might have put that down the wrong way. I'm not too sure. I think that's down the right way, but don't, count, don't quote me on that uh, until we've tested it in a second. Uh, so that's been running. Let's see about transferring that power to something else. So if we use immersive engineering's form of power transportation, which uses these uh, wire connectors and then some wire, we can actually connect uh, redstone flux power, which is this thing over here, up to Industrial Craft 2 machine. So we can use the power generated by the water wheel here to power both our redstone flux machines, so all this stuff down here, as well as our Industrial Craft 2 machines. The only reason I made the generator uh, was so we could get the metal former going early early on and then start to actually make the water wheel components so uh, let's go back over here we're gonna need some more of that hardened clay so let me take some clay out of there and start smelting that up in here i'll put like 12 in there for now that's more than enough uh, to make our first set of lv wire connectors we need some copper ingots and some hardened clay and then to go along with that we're going to use some lv wire coils which are made using copper ingots and some more treated sticks thankfully again we still have some more treated sticks as well as some more treated wood so uh, if we grab some of that do something like that this with those in the middle that's gonna get us a bunch of wire we probably don't need all that much to start with here uh, because the wire does actually go quite far and we're gonna be able to use this uh, to hook all of these up fairly easily uh, so let me quickly turn rain sounds off because those are real annoying uh, let's wait for the fourth one of these to smell up and once that's done we can grab it we can come back over to our crafting table we can go boom 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 throw the copper down the middle, get ourselves the wire connectors, and now I think all we need to do here is put one wire connector on the power source, so the kinetic dynamo in this case, and then another one uh, on the output source. So for example, let's say we put it on the auto save, because right now this guy's getting no power, he is, he is full on power. Let's see about, also by the way, you can put food into this thing, apparently to make him run faster as well. Uh, let's see about putting something in here. Let's grab a little bit more sand, just to start to drain the power a little bit, and test if my uh, little setup here is going to actually work and produce power. So let's put you in there. That's going to start to sift, and it's going to start to lower the power. So the power is currently going down. If we put one of these on top here, and then connect this up from here to here, like so, you can see, use one of our coils there, and now we look inside... It's actually gaining power. So it's now using less power than the water wheel is producing, which is fantastic. And then we can do the same thing over here. We can put one there. We can do something like this and this. That's going to use the second one. But now we don't need to bother putting all of our coal into the heat generator there because it's going to use the power from the water wheel instead of using the power from the generator right there. And then finally, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that we should be able to maybe do something like this. I'm actually not at all certain if this works, but we're about to find out. I'm going to break this because we don't really need this anymore. Uh, don't worry, this unlimited water source and the, uh, the fluid transfer node is not going to go to waste. There's no redstone flux in that. I'll break it later. Uh, but for now, let's see about putting some redstone in here and making another redstone chipset. It looks... See, that's it has a 10,000 out of 10,000. But this is... Oh, it's doing something. Power is going down, but power is not going up. So it might not work 
directly on there, or I might have put it in the wrong place. I'm not sure if we get the coil back for that. We do. Uh, let me try real quick putting it... Can I put it like there? I can't. So what we might have to do for this is these guys might require some form of flux duct. So what we should probably do, uh, just as good practice, is set up some kind of energy cell to start to store the energy that's being made by the water wheel there so we can use it later on down the line. And we should also make ourselves some leadstone flux ducts to start to power those lasers because the lasers and the assembly table are used for a bunch of stuff within this mod pack as well. So... We type in leadstone, and we can start by making ourselves a leadstone energy cell here, and that's going to require an electric circuit, four lead, two tin electron tubes, a normal leadstone energy cell, which is some glass, lead, and redstone, which is actually fairly easy to make. Uh, I think we still have some glass lying around in one of these chests. We do, and we have just enough as well. Uh, so let's take that. Let's put you in the middle, I think. I think lead goes in the corners. Uh, also, let's put some of our ingots back now because we're not going to be using steel, silver, uh, iron, or tin for this crafting recipe. We might use it later on uh, in today's episode, but I just want to clear my inventory up just a little bit. So we can take that. Now we need tin electron tubes, which means we're going to need our thermionic fabricator once again. This machine, I'm fairly certain we can just hook up directly with with one of these. And by the way, I will make all of this look a little bit nicer in the future. I'm aware right now that this is a complete and total mess, but I'm kind of going for uh, function over form. So let's throw a little bit of sand in there. Again, I'm not really bothered. I don't want to throw glass in because glass takes time to smelt. So let's throw the sand in there and see if that starts to burn. It might, I think this should work, but again, it might not do. And then let's look at the recipe for the tin electron tubes. Much like with the diamondite ones, it is just some tin ingots and some redstone. So let's just do something like this. Put you down there, put the redstone either side and stick that in there as well. Uh, hopefully that will then start to build up. I so it turns out if you put lead in a recipe that requires tin, it doesn't work. So instead of we put some tin in there, it's then going to start to work. It is missing the liquid resource, but it is heating up a lot quicker than it used to now, uh, thanks to the increased power from the water wheel. This thing produces, I think, about 90 redstone flux per tick at max speed. This one might be producing uh, a little bit less because we don't have the water going all the way underneath. It is spinning up there a little bit. It looks like it's speeding up. Uh, we don't have, I don't think this is as efficient as it could be uh, because the water should be flowing a little bit underneath as well. Uh, but it should be producing somewhere between 70 and 90 redstone flux per tick. We are going to work pretty quickly on getting a new source of power because although this works, it's not the best source of power long term. Uh, the last time I played this pack, when I played the non Skyblock version, uh, I decided to make a bunch of water wheels. This time, I'm going to go with a bit of a different approach. Uh, we're going to use the water wheel for some early game power, uh, but probably next episode, we're going to start working on setting up a new power system, something that's going to work better uh, in the long term and be able to be a bit more expandable than the water wheel is because you can only make this a total of three wide and outside of that, you can only really make more and more of them and you can't see how much redstone flux are producing so they're a little bit i'm not a huge fan but they work quite nicely to start with this thing is done we could take that i don't want to make more of those four should be fine i think we accidentally made eight there but that's fine as well let's take those bring them back over here uh, and what else are we missing so we need another one of these electronic circuits which means we are going to require a little bit more rubber let me quickly go and grab one of those and this is also actually the perfect time to put our metal farmer to use. So if we go ahead and stick this in, I think, extruding mode? It's a little weird because you'd think the one with the cutters there would be the root, like the one that we'd use because we use the cutters uh, to actually go and make the, the wires. But apparently you have to use extruding mode uh, on this machine to have that happen. So let's go ahead and put two of those in there. I think that's going to make us four cables. Uh, let me look through here and see if I can find it real quick. It's going to make us three. Uh, so that's going to get us six, which is the perfect amount for making the chipset. We're also going to need uh, one of these redstone conductors coils, which requires an electrum ingot. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good about making the extra two electrum ingots inside of the smeltery right now. So let's put you there and pull out one of those. We've got the redstone to do it. That's fine. These guys are pretty much done. The rubber is on its way, and it's actually done as well. So let's go ahead and craft those up like that. And like that, we'll take all of those. Then all we need after that is an iron plate. So let's actually do uh, this again. We could do it with the hammer. The hammer is faster, but the metal farmer is much more efficient when it comes to this. I don't want to make iron cables. You've got to watch out for that. I've done it many a time where you leave it on extruding mode and come out with some iron cables instead of an iron plate. I think rolling does get as an iron plate. Uh, let's take you, craft that up with some redstone to make the conductance coil. Like so, this thing should be pretty much done. It is that it got us the iron plate. I'm glad we can then put that in the middle with some redstone and some insulated copper cable to get ourselves the electronic circuit, which we can then craft up with all the rest of the stuff to get ourselves a redstone energy cell. Nice. We can then put this, I guess for now, right about there. And if we put it there, well, well, the reason I put it there is because, first of all, we can hook it up fairly easily from here to here. And I believe, I don't know if there's like a limit to how many connections you can have on this, but we can hook it up from here to here. This should then start to fill up if we set the top to blue. Oh, maybe. 
if it's producing enough, I'm pretty sure blue is input. And I made the exact same mistake I made last time I made this. Uh, for, some, for some reason, the max default uh, input and output for this is set to zero. You want to turn that up uh, all the way to 200, I guess, to start with here. Now it's going to start receiving power. And if we change if we change the front to orange, like so, and set that to max output 200, that's going to start to power the laser. We could use some leadstone flux ducts as well. And in the future, what I will probably end up doing is moving uh, this leadstone energy cell to somewhere else than using leadstone flux ducts to power multiple things. We'll probably have most of our power go through this leadstone energy cell. Uh, but for now, that works out quite fine this is gaining power so it should stay uh, at full speed when it's blue it means it is running at full speed they're running at full 40 redstone flux per tick and uh, these lasers can run out so this is running at full speed we do need to invest in some more lasers because these chipsets do take quite a while to make and they are used quite frequently so we definitely need to invest in some more lasers but now that we have quite a few diamonds and now that we have a good source of power making more of these should be fine because the thermionic fabricator is running faster obsidian is still super easy to get so making more lasers is gonna be nice and easy next time we'll come back we will work on a better power source probably using some steam dynamos uh, and some steam generation uh, but with that guys i'm gonna end this episode of feed the beast infinity vault skyblock there as always thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video please hit like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time yeah.